Hello everybody, hopefully you're having a wonderful day. And this is lesson number 31. We're going to dive into the wonderful world of musical theory. And today we're going to be talking about, my friends, key signature. Yay! I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, I, you've heard me say this at least a thousand times throughout this entire section. Um, delving into scales and triads and everything just because um, this has all been building up talking about key signature but um, ironically before we get to talking about key signature I have to say something more about major man scales so I have actually not mentioned but there are some rules about writing major minor scales and these come from key signature mainly due to key signature we include these rules and I'll explain exactly what they are. So normally we've just been writing major and minor scales, like normally just picking whatever pitch we want, right? But now there are some rules as to the proper way to write them down. And these rules are there due to key signature. Um so yeah, let's get into it and I'll teach you the way the rules work. Okay, so the first rule is when writing a major scale, you can use only sharps or only flats now what that means is of course not every major some major skills are going to have some black keys some accidentals as we call them in music right so when you're writing a major scale you can't have in the same major scale f sharp and a flat for example no you have to write it in terms of f sharp and g sharp they both need to be f sharp and g sharp you can so throughout the major scale, all your accidentals, all your non-natural keys, all your black keys have to be written either as sharps or as flats, all of them. So you can't have, you can't write, for example, um, a D major scale as D, uh, D, E, D, E, G flat, A, B, C sharp, D. Now, if I play this on the piano, right? Oh, I forgot G in the middle. I'm so sorry. Oui. You can go there. Right? Now, if I play this on the piano, this is gonna sound like a D major scale. It is a D major scale, but it's the incorrect way to write it down. Remember, G sharp, G, G flat is the same as F sharp, but it's the wrong way to write it down. And we'll come to why this is the case. We'll come to why we don't, you know, particularly use uh, uh, two different types of accidentals in the same major scale, right? But for now, this is a rule. So you can only use either all sharps or all flats. That's the rule. So keep that in mind. Anyways, moving forward, there is also one more rule. You must use each. I call it letter for this rule. Letter at least once. Now, let me explain this rule. Okay, so for the purposes of key signature and major and minor scales, um, I'm going to think of A flat, A, and A sharp, all being alterations, just deviations of A. So, different versions of A. Right? I'm going to think of A flat and A sharp being just different versions of A. Right? This, so, they are their own individual pitches, they are their, their own keys on the piano but for our purposes today any sharp or flat will be considered just a different version of the actual natural pitch right so a flat is a deviation or version of a and a sharp a version of a as well right this that's a, it's one way to conceptualize that and i'll explain what i mean for so you're allowed to use only one version of each pitch one and only one in a scale and you have to include all so let me Clarify what that means. So let's say I have to write, hmm, let's say I have to write D major scale, right? So I have to use each letter once, and I can't use one letter twice. So I have to include all the letters, and I have to include them all at least once. Have you, so yeah, the, you have to use, you have to use all the letters while I'm doing this, and I have to include all of them once. Right, I can't include one twice, but it's actually impossible to include one twice and use all of them. So, regardless, my point being, um, 
all the letters should be present and you should not have used one twice basically and we are not include we're not uh, we're counting the sharps and flats as that letter itself so they should another way to think about it is, as i told you to conceptualize it here right is that there must be at least one deviation of each pitch present so just to communicate what i'm saying so me writing d, d major scale as d e g flat g a b d flat d now this is correct this is a d major scale i have placed on the pair of d major scale this obeys the first rule because i have only used flats however it's incorrect because the second rule i explained why because i've used g twice here right i know the g is flat i know i understand but my point is i've used g twice here and i'm that's why i told you to think of this as a deviation of g i've used the letter g twice here and you know what i've also used the letter d twice here and you know what else i've also not used the letter f and not used the letter c so i have to have to have to use all the letters when i'm writing a scale and i also cannot use a single letter twice okay so th that's the way this works okay i can't use a single letter twice so this was this is wrong right let's look at another example right or one way to think about it is if i want to write um a, a d major scale i write i first write it like this d e f g a b c d and i make any alterations i need to so i make this sharp f sharp and i make this c sharp and boom i'm at a d major scale now right point being these are the two rules you can conceptualize it you can come up with your own way of thinking about it whatever you feel like but these are the two rules so you can only if you're using sharps only use sharps if you're using flats only use flats and you must use each letter at least once and you can't use one letter twice it goes hand in hand right and what that means is is that um even if it's f sharp i can't use f or if i've used f i can't use f sharp is that how it works so this is correct why because i only use sharps and each letter is present and i'm not using a single letter twice so that works these are two rules for writing major and minor scales and as for why these rules exist you will soon find out the minute we start talking about key signature so once again these rules are important why because because of key signature so let me just get rid of this and this out start again so as you can see i just drew up my staff here um for you know, of course to write down now so as i said those are the two rules you must keep them in mind right and now we can get to actually talking about key signature and those i, I the reason i introduced those two rules here is because well they are very closely linked to key signature and i would explain that um why they are so closely linked to key signature um after talk about key signature Now, before we get into talking about key signatures, you have to realize one thing: that most music which we write, right? Most music which is written is in fact written in a major. It is in fact written in a major or minor scale, right? It is in fact written in a major or minor scale. All music, right? Nearly all music. You rarely find music which is not written in a major. and or minor scale right to give you an example twinkle twinkle little star is written in c major scale the jingle bells the way i played it is written in c major scale and regardless of which which transposition you use it's written in a major scale um 
it's written in a major scale is my point um uh, beethoven symphony number no. 5 is written in uh, c minor scale um fairly is written in a minor scale a lot of mozart's piano sonatas this one is written in c major scale point being lots of music is written in either major or minor scale in fact most music and what does this mean that the pitches that are used in that piece of music consist mainly of the pitches of the major scale right so if i whatever all the pitches that i've used in that piece of music consist mainly of the of the pitches of that are present in the major scale some deviations are there but nearly all the pitches um that are there that are nearly all the pitches that are there in the music are the pitches of a single major scale right and to put this into perspective let's take twinkle twinkle little star right so it's that is write the pitch down c c g g a a g uh, f f e e d d c and it, and it goes on and so on and so forth and but you realize that all of these pitches i mean all of them are in the c major scale which is c d e f g a b c all of these pitches are in the c major scale and all, all of them are in the c major scale right not even one is not there right and that's something that's very important and most music is like this is what my point is most music is written in a major scale what i mean by written in a major scale is i mean that all the pitches nearly nearly all the pitches in, in that music are part of that specific major scale come for that specific major scale so okay so now with that knowledge right now with that knowledge now i want to introduce the concept of key signature so let's take a music that let's take some music that was written in g major scale for an example let's say some music was written in g major scale right in g major scale okay what are the what are the pitches in g major scale it's following the rules which i just taught right is g a b c d e f sharp g right this is g major scale right now i i just told you most music so if this music is written in g major scale that means it's going to be using mainly these pitches right so what you'll realize is when i'm writing whatever music it is right whatever it may be i'll end up using a lot more f sharp i'll i'll end up using a lot of f sharp right because it's there in the scale so there'll be quite a bit of f sharp written on the sheet of music because once again i'll probably encounter f sharp throughout my music and you know what else um i will likely not use the regular f all that much either i probably won't use the regular f because it's not part of the scale i'll use it very little or maybe not at all and i'll use f sharp quite a bit i probably use f sharp quite a bit right so try and what this is so i'm pretty sure it's common sense right because if it's written in the major scale and it's using this you probably won't use f and you you will probably won't use f and you'll use a lot of f sharp right and the thing to realize is that what this does is i have every time i have to write f sharp i have to use an accidental which means the sharp symbol right and if i'm writing f sharp a lot this clutters up the music it makes it harder to read and harder to write it clutters it up and when it's just one sharp like f sharp um it's not that big a deal right it's okay but some scales some scales like e major scale and c uh, c sharp c sharp major scale have four sharps have five sharps have six sharps associated with them so that means you'll be using accidentals for nearly each and every single note and that's a much bigger problem so it's a more general problem where you you want to use in general in music as little accidentals as possible because accidentals clutter up the music it makes it hard to read it's hard to write it's hard to understand it clutters up the music and makes it look less neat as well so we it's in our best interest as musicians and composers to use as little accidentals as possible and for that we have come up with key signature so that's why we have key signature now i'll explain what it is so key signature is a small marking you place after it left on star it looks something like this for g major scale and it's a bunch of sharps and or flats placed on certain lines and it's a, um for example another key signature is this another key signature could be this right 
which is the key signature for e-mini scale. And basically, it's a bunch of sharps and or flats placed. On this is the key signature for f-mini scale. So it's a bunch of sharps and or flat, no sharps or flats placed on after the clef, just after the clef in certain positions on the stuff, right? They're markings. They're markings of sharps and flats on the stuff. And now we come to so that's what they are. And now what's their purpose? What do they do? Well, number one, they tell us what key the piece is in. What key? Right? And by what key I mean, um, the key is a fancy word of saying what scale is it in? Is it in F major scale? Is it in G major scale? Is it in um, C sharp major scale? And as I said, most music is written in a major scale. So just looking at the key signature, I can immediately tell which scale, which key it is, which key it is in, which is very useful to me as a musician, composer, audience member, conductor, or whoever I am. It's very, it's very useful to know the key. Second thing is, is now where this problem comes in, right? So in in in, F, in G major scale, I have I would write a lot of F sharp and not that much F. So instead of writing F sharp each time, I put a sharp marking uh, on the F. This top line is F if you remember, right? In the, in the, in the treble clef, this top line is F. So I put a sharp marking on that line. And you know what that sharp marking does? It says that all the Fs, every time I write F, either anywhere, I could write it, I write, I write an F here, or if I write an F here, right? Any time I write an F, automatically consider it to be F sharp. Automatically consider it to be F sharp. Right? And what, what this does is, instead of having to write F sharp over and over and over again, now I can just write F cleanly. And now I can write my sheet music without any accident. Now this does not mean that you can't write F, right? The regular F, F natural as it's called. All you have to do for that is you have to include another accidental that's called a natural sign. It looks like this. So we talked about sharps, we talked about flats. I'll introduce one more. This is natural. So when you have a key signature which is automatically turning all the um, lines and spaces corresponding to a speci specific pitch into sharp or flat, this natural helps you turn it back into a natural pitch, right? But regardless, my point hopefully has been illustrated. So instead of having to write F sharp over and over and over again, which would be my fate, right, if I was writing a G major scale, I can just write F now. Just cleanly write F and it's automatically considered to be F sharp. And then I said it's not that big a deal in G major scale, but as I said, E major scale has four sharps. So now I'm relieved of writing um, an accidental for four of the notes that are in my scale, which are going to occur quite often. So it makes the music much easier to read, much easier to write, much cleaner as well, much neater. And it has the added bonus of letting me know what key the music is right away. Right? So hopefully this is what key signature is. It is a marking that you put at the beginning of a stuff, which tells you, which turns automatically all those, all all the Fs which I write in the stuff, on the stuff into sharp or if it was flat or auto flat. Right? And it's here where I want to talk about the rules again. Right? So now, for those of you who are curious why the rules exist, for those of you who are curious why they exist, the rules which I just talked about for major and minor scales, I will tell you. But this may confuse you. So for those of you who aren't curious and are willing to take it at face value, feel free to skip this part where I'm telling, where I'm talking about the reason why, 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 why these rules exist, right? Okay. So well, I'm assuming those of you who went straight on, and I'll explain. So key signature is one of the major reasons why we, why these rules exist, right? And I briefly tell you, if I wrote the scale G A B C D E G flat G, which is a violation of the rule because I use G twice and I have it with F. Here's the problem. I'm going to be using lots of, I'm going to be writing lots of G flat, right? And I'm also going to be writing lots of G. So on because each one of these lines and spaces correspond to a single natural pitch, right? This line G has two versions of it in the scale now. So I can't put a key signature because if I put a flat, I have to every time I want to write a G, I have to correct it. But if I and if I put a and if I leave it open, then every time I want to write G flat, I have to write a flat. So and so another way to think about it is I should be able to write all the notes of a scale on the staff without using an accidental with key signature. And I simply can't do that if I write scale like this because once again. How, how, how am I supposed to write something on the line G because there's both a natural and a flat pitch present So that's why this rule exists one of the reasons why another reason is to teach intervals and sharp here. Okay, so now we're done talking about that and then we can move on to talk a little bit more about key signature Okay, now I want to give an example of Another key signature which is F major. Let's take F major 
and so far we've been talking mainly in flats but now f major is in fact has one flat one has one flat in it right we've talked mainly in terms of sharps up here we, now we will talk about one that has flat so f major let's write out the key inside of the major scale right f we need to move a tone ahead g we need to move a tone ahead a we need to move a semitone ahead now you might be tempted to write a sharp right because it's semitone but then you realize hey you use a twice so that's not allowed so instead of writing a flat a sharp i will have to write its counterpart b flat instead of writing a flat i'm writing b flat why because i can't use a twice and then i have to move a tone from that which is c i have to move a tone and then a tone and a semitone and i'm done so as you can see my b is flat once again same logic if i'm writing something in f major scale i'm going to be using a lot of b flat right i'm going to be using a lot of b flat and you know what i'm not going to be using b regular b i'm not going to be using all that much so instead of cluttering up i'm using by writing flat over and over and over again i simply say with this marking on the b i write a flat on the b in the beginning of the music itself and say automatically all the b's in this music or all, all all this b right here the b that lies there the b that lies here the b that lies here all of them all of them are automatically flat automatically i consider them to be the flat b flat instead of b and whenever i want to write a regular b or a white key b or a natural b i put this small natural symbol next to it right okay let's take one more example for today so that, that's what key signature is just makes my life easier right instead of me having to write sharp over and over and over again i can just write i can just make all of them automatically sharp or let's take one more example let's take let's take a bigger one now let's take e major scale right okay so i have to write e and you have to always double check by the way if you are obeying both the rules otherwise your key signature won't be valid so e then a tone from that f sharp keep that in mind and I, I i could write g flat but and then in the next ones e sharp you notice that i need to write it uh, if you ever if you ever we we'll finish writing in terms of sharps and just double check so that's that's the best way to do it e then f sharp then then you go to a then b so you have tone tone semitone tone 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 semitone now have i i've only used sharps and in each letter mentioned once we have the tonic yes so e f g a b c d e i mentioned all of them and i haven't besides e of course i haven't used any other one twice so great it works right and one if you if you're struggling to see if it works one easy trick is just write as i said e f g a b c d e and just try to make changes don't change the letters just try to change it normally and you'll notice that this is a version that so it works that's my point so this is e major scale written correctly out given the rules of how i'm supposed to write it no letter appears twice um all of them appear at least once and i won't leave sharps so once again this is an example of why key signature can be very useful so like this let me write out the e major scale right i have e no sorry this is i have e i have f sharp i have g sharp i have a i have b i have c sharp i have d sharp and i have e so can you see i have to write at least four sharps uh, to write the entire scale out and if i'm writing music which has all of these pitches in it and preferably and usually no others then i'm going to be writing sharps a lot i'm going to write i'm going to end up writing sharps over and over again and lots of them that that says that clutters up the music makes it hard to read and this to very large extent because there's four sharps so instead of doing that instead of setting up the music like that i say that f sharp c sharp or let me just erase this right here oh no i can't read it okay i'll i'll rewrite it no problem so instead of writing all the sharps i say f sharp c sharp g sharp and so f c actually f um c a so f c f c g d 
which is you know so f c g t all these notes are automatically sharp that way now with this key signature i can write the scale like this e great i should make it a bit longer e and f is automatically sharp i don't have to write sharp great g is automatically sharp i don't have to write sharp a is not sharp it's fine b is also fine c is automatically sharp i don't have to write it d is also automatically sharp i don't have to write it and e and see i've written the entire scale without having used any ad symbols just with the help of this key signature and as i said this is useful when you're writing music because most music is written in a major scale most in a major scale so this really helps you do it and of course uh, if i were writing something in f major if f major scale i already told you you have one flat like this that means all the bees are automatically flat and there are more examples for example um E flat major scale looks like this. Sorry about that. E flat major scale looks like that. Whatever, right? So I'll be going more into the type of um, flats and sharps and which keys and everything is later. But today I wanted to introduce the idea of what a key signature is and the rules for writing a major minor scale, right? I wanted to introduce that today, and hopefully I've done that. So once again, the key signature is just a tool to make our life easier and also by bonus it allows us to immediately guess, not guess, immediately know the key the piece is in which is very useful. So anyway, that's just an introduction to key signature. We'll be going more into detail in the lessons that follow this. Uh, thank you so much um, for listening in. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you took something valuable from it and I will see you next lesson. Bye.